Hey everybody! In this month's gel printing video, I am going to do something I call a backfill technique using these super fun and creepy Halloween themed stencils. So to begin with, I will create kind of a colorful background. I will be using some magenta and yellow paint to create like a just a spooky sort of mood for my little zombies. I love these zombie stencils. They are the first in a series of stencils. I used the newest zombie stencils on my blog this week, but these are the first zombie stencils that I ever bought, and I just love them. Now, when you have open stencils like this with solid images, that's where this backfilling really becomes important. So the first layer needs to be a pretty thin layer. You'll see me removing a lot of the paint there. I want this to be somewhat transparent. And then I have two different sets of zombies. One has multiple figures on one stencil, and then one is the female zombie. Now with the five by seven press, I will be able to fit both of these onto the plate at the same time. It's totally okay if they overlap just a little bit. I do want them pressed down, so I press a little bit to make sure they're stuck to the plate because I don't want them to move. And then the first step in backfilling is just to remove the paint from the open areas. And of course, this way you get a little bonus zombie print. So I will just carefully do that. I'm just using a piece of copy paper. As you know, copy paper is pretty much all that I print on. Now, when you lift this up, especially with some of the smaller areas, you'll want to make sure that the paint has really fully lifted. So if you need to adjust a little bit in these smaller spaces, then just you can use the same copy paper. You can take a piece of deli paper, which works great for lifting anything sort of thin, just to make sure that you have something to backfill and that that image isn't obscured. So obscured. So take the time to do that really, really well. It's absolutely worth it in the end. And then here are some fun little zombies that you have. So the next step is to grab your backfill color. I'm using black just for creepy sort of silhouette look on my kind of apocalyptic background. So I have some black paint here doesn't really matter what kind of paint you're using. Whatever you normally print with is fine. I did make a little bit of a mess and got it all over my hands. This is a more fluid type of acrylic paint than the paint that I was using for the background, but it doesn't make a difference. Now I'm upping the creepiness factor with some matte acrylics in green. I really love this green and you can't have really a zombie without adding a little bit of green. So take just a finely textured sponge. I always cut my sponges up and just use a little piece of them and just pat that paint down into your little zombie openings. Make sure it's completely covered, especially with those smaller ones. You'll want to make sure that you get that black paint all over. You don't want this to be a super thick layer of backfill because you will want to lift this entire thing when it's dry. Now I'm taking the matte acrylic and adding just a little bit of green. This will be pretty subtle. It's really only going to show through where the paint is at the thinnest but it adds so much interest to use two backfill colors rather than one. Now I will lift that off and you can see that zombie goodness there. Even the little figures are very clear and this builds like a super creepy all over scene. Now I'm going to just manipulate the paint on the plate a little bit. You can lift paint, you can add paint. This is the time to really make the atmosphere in the background exactly the way you want it. I decided I wanted a little bit more of that magenta 
So I'll mix that with the yellow and add that directly to some of the spots on the plate that look like they are pretty translucent at this point. So I'll just go around the edges. This is looking good and creepy at this point. Now you really want to let that dry completely. So you can use a little hand dryer to help it along, but really the best thing to do is just wait. So I just waited until this was dry and then I'm using a little bit of white paint to lift. Now remember that lift layers need to be very thin layers. I always put too much on my <laughs> lift layer. It never fails. So you'll want to roll that off and get that to be a pretty transparent layer of white paint to do your lifting with. And that is so that it completely pulls the images up from the plate. So you have the base layer, then you have the backfill layer, and both of those need to come up at the same time. So you'll want a very thin layer of paint. Make sure that doesn't get too dry on the plate because that also won't lift. And then we will pull this up and see what happens. If you're working against the air conditioning, please take that into account because if your paint, your lift layer dries on top of your scene layer, then it won't pull. And I have that sometimes with the air conditioning drying my print a little bit too quickly. So make sure that you rub it really, really well. Don't skimp on this step because that also makes sure that you get good adhesion. And I can see from pulling up the corner that this is going to work really, really well. So I pull pretty slowly. You can start to see the zombies coming up and that looks great. It's really cleanly lifting off of my plate. Oh, I just love this. This is so much fun. I had determined that I was going to do a Halloween gel press print <laughs> video this year, actually in time for Halloween. So this timing is just perfect. Now you can see there's a little spot up there that it didn't pull completely, but it's totally fine. It's just a white space on the print. So there's the zombie print. Now we will recreate this for another sort of creepy background using the exact same backfill technique and the same colors. So I'm doing magenta and yellow again. And I will be rolling that out. This is just such a classic, great combination and it looks so good with the black for some reason so I went with this instead of blues just because I think it adds a lot of atmosphere to that sort of Halloween feel with almost an orange color with the magenta and the yellow coming together and then of course you add the black and then it's all Halloween all the time so this fun sort of psychedelic little stencil is what I'm going to use for the second background and I will do exactly the same process. I will just lift. Now this one is a lot more intricate. And so you really need to get your fingers in there and make sure that you lift out all of those spirals. Because this is such a clean design, sort of like the other one, but a lot more intricate. You'll want that lift to be super, super clean. And you can see there's like no paint left on the plate in those openings. So that's really great. If you need to pick up a little bit extra, feel free. And then this will be a great base layer for another print, just like the lift print of the zombies will be a great base layer for another print. They'll just sort of fade into the background. And what's creepier than zombies in the background? Nothing, pretty much nothing. Okay, same process. We'll take some of this paint. This paint is still wet. That's one of the reasons that I like to use a more fluid acrylic for this stage if you're doing this backfill process it's best just to do a couple of prints while you have the paint out but the fluid acrylic stays wet just a little bit longer and so it'll let me do both of those prints without my paint drying on my craft mat some of the thicker acrylics can tend to dry out just a little bit if they sit out for that long now the matte acrylic down lower right, the green that is still wet as well, and I will be adding some of that. It'll be basically exactly the same color scheme. Using a sponge really helps you keep that layer thin so you're not just sitting around waiting forever for this to dry. That's another great reason for the sponge. 
but if you wanted to backfill with your brayer, you could definitely do that. So I will lift that. Now I have my sort of creepy circles. I let that dry and then I will put a little bit of white paint on here. Try not to get too much like I always do and use that to lift this print. Now I will go to pull this print off and you can see it registered perfectly. It's pulling everything up off of the plate. You do get those one or two areas that sticks. It just kind of adds to the grunginess of the print, but that looks pretty amazing. That's going to be a fun background for a spooky Halloween card. So here are both of the prints together. Very fun, same mood on both of them. The zombie print is great. That's actually just going into a mat in my craft room. And then this will be turned into a card. Head over to my blog for more information and thanks so much for watching.